last time on the Chef Jeff Project. This event is for the LA Dodgers. What? Think Cure Foundation. And we're gonna cook at the Dodger Stadium. The food is for kids who have cancer. Mm. Oh my gosh. The crew used their new cooking skills to help others. Where's Maria Shante and Adam? But some of my staff were too wrapped up in personal drama to focus on the event. It's the devil trying to bring me down. No, he does not. <laughs> in the end, cooking for kids helped my crew put their lives in perspective. When I saw them kids, you know, and their, and their problems, that made me feel like I need to throw my problems in the trash. Now I'm taking them back to my roots. Welcome to Las Vegas, crew. This is my neighborhood, where I hope they will not only work as a team, but as a family. You changed my life, man. <laughs> when I went to prison for selling drugs, I learned to cook. It saved my life, and I became a successful chef. Now, I want to set these six on the right path. They're going to work with me to find a new direction. That's why I created the Chef Jeff Project, to prove that you could be successful, not only in the kitchen, but in life. When the crew members leave the Chef Jeff Project, I want them to be ready for the rough road ahead. For recovering drug addicts like Brett and Kathy, the temptation to go back in that life is gonna be everywhere. Maria and Shante don't have a whole lot of support from their families to succeed. Alonzo and Adam are always under pressure by gang members in the neighborhood to bring them back into a life of crime. So I want to take them out of the hood, away from the negative influences in their lives. Chef. What's up, y'all? What's up? What's up? We're not going to cook today. I'm going to tell you guys about our next event. Next event is going to be big, but I'm not going to tell you what the catering events are until we get there. We're going to Las Vegas. <laughs> Man, I never thought that I would go to Vegas. I've never been to Vegas my whole life. I always wanted to experience that, that time, you know, because ever since I've been 18, I always thought that, you know, I'm going to go to Vegas, you know. I'm hoping Adam will take this trip seriously. I am a little concerned for him just because it is a fun environment and he seems to like to hang out and just have a good time. We really have to take this seriously because we are still going to be working there. Some of y'all been hard-headed as hell. I hired y'all. So I'm letting you know that I'm going to have all eyes on you. So I want you guys to uh, get on out of here. Go home. Are you trying to wake? I'm not dreaming. I know. Uh, I'm trying to pitch me. <laughs> when I was released from prison, I was determined not to go back to my old hustling ways. I decided to move my family to Las Vegas to get away from the old associations and habits because I didn't want nothing to stand in the way of my dreams. I want the crew to learn these valuable lessons. I want them to see what it feels like to work in a brand new town, far away from all the negative influences that's in their lives. You know, we're all ex-something, either ex-drug users or ex-drug dealers or just hotheads, you know? So um, to think that chef is um, gonna pile all of us ex-somethings up together and um, take us to Sin City is kind of crazy, you know, because you don't know what to expect. Yeah. Okay, what's this? Oh. We stay on the corner, like the Hummer limo just like coming through and we're just like, oh. <laughs> I've never been in a limo before in my life. That was my first time. I came to the kitchen by public transportation, by the bus, the metro. So I was like, oh my god. 11 years ago, I walked out the joint. I was making $5.75 an hour, washing dishes in Beverly Hills. I believe that you got to leave from the area that you had drama. This whole dream, everything that's happening for me right now, it seems like I, I envisioned it. And if you believe in something strong enough and you envision it, it'll manifest, you know, through hard work and sacrifice. The toughest um, thing to do is to, to cut that umbilical cord from your past. Chef Jeff, he, he talked about life experiences and like how he became a success himself, all the things he had to give up to get to where he's at right now. And uh, you know, it was very inspiring. That connection to the past is always going to be, it's like you have that umbilical cord. Sometimes you got to cut it from your family. You know, sometimes your family is your worst enemy sometimes.
because they've been caught up in a cycle of poverty, that cycle of ignorance. They're, they're living in a box. So when they see you try to get out of that box, they'll be like, oh, you can't do that. So what they do, they break your self-esteem down in in But in reality, they should be saying, you know, I'm proud of you, go out there, you can do it. I know exactly what he's talking about because I've been there, done that. Like my, my kid's father, he used to like try to try to crush my dreams and you know, misery loves company. The last time I visited Vegas was um, kind of emotional for me because that's when I said goodbye to my dad for the last time. My dad right now, he's in Kuwait. Maria's only 18 years old. Her dad's in the military. He was sent to the Middle East. So he told Maria to live with her stepmother. The problem was Maria and her stepmother didn't get along. So when Maria moved out, her and her dad stopped talking. It was like um, probably four, almost five months ago that I said goodbye to my dad in Vegas. What? And that was actually the, the last time I saw him, the last time I said goodbye, like the last time I shed tears for him. Oh, wow, I can't believe we're here. As we pulled up to our hotel, we were staying at the MGM Signature Suite. It's, it's amazing. I've honestly never seen anything like this before. It's just, it's luxury. All right, you guys, let's go. Check in, huh? Yeah. James. Thank you. Have a great time. Thank you. <laughs> this is a nice chair. All right, let's go check in. Oh my God, this room is sick. This doesn't compare to the Dream Center. Like, I'm used to like a, a four inch mattress. So having this huge bed, it's just, it's amazing. Oh, phone in the bathroom, cool. I'm gonna use that. I swear to God, sleeping in the bed again is tight because I haven't slept in the bed by myself since I was in jail. Being a product of my environment, um, I'm used to hard times and not living so well. But um, you know, it's some things that I just don't see in my normal life that I've seen on this little trip to Vegas. So this letting me know that this is something I'm trying to work for. Next up on the Chef Jeff Project. Crew, I want all of you guys to create a signature sushi. Based on the challenge today is how I'm going to figure out my hierarchy in the kitchen. Everyone that completes the Chef Jeff Project is eligible for a two-year scholarship at the International Culinary Schools at the Art Institute. I decided to make the kitchen at the Las Vegas yeah. campus our home base. Seeing the Art Institute just is really making it come to life that I am going to be going to school soon. It got me really excited for my future. Um, I could see myself being a student at the Art Institute, working in there, walking there, you know, just chilling, meeting friends out there. I could touch my dreams. Everything is falling in place. Welcome to Las Vegas, crew. This is my neighborhood. This is uh, my hometown. This is a great opportunity for you guys to be prepping in the school that you guys won scholarships from. But this event here is going to give you guys exposure beyond your dreams. We're doing an event for Ka. Ka is a creation by Circus Soleil and is at the MGM Grand Hotel. It's an amazing show. We're catering for 80 performers between the two shows there tomorrow night. And I was tripping out, you know, because me and Brett was just in the room talking about, dang, man, I wish we could do a catering event for Ka. I'm going to tell you what everybody there loves. And they love sushi. And I'm going to show you guys how to do a basic roll. This is snorri paper. This is seaweed paper. You can also take these mats, these Japanese mats here. And this will help you form it. So the whole thing is making it tight. So you take your rice and you do it just like this. Now, I know what I'm talking about. All right, now, I'm going to do this real simple. I'm just going to put some carrots in there. I'm going to push them down in there a little bit because I want them right in the middle. Now, take this over like this. You want to hold it tight. Then you take this off. You see there? So here we go. I'm going to get you some nice slices here. Consistent. Now, you can put anything in you want in there. Let's get funky. There we go. Booyah. 
So crew, I want all of you guys to create a signature sushi. I've been pushing the crew to work with flavors outside of their comfort zone. They have to make sushi for the next event. So I'm taking it one step further by asking them to invent a version of their own. Based on the challenge today is how I'm going to figure out my hierarchy in the kitchen. So listen up, we got 45 minutes to plate up time. I'm like, oh my goodness, I don't know how to make no sushi. I never made any sushi before. I want you guys to really think about your flavor profile. Think about the ingredients that you put together, your presentation. On almost every challenge so far, Alonzo gets all worked up. He has his fear of failure that sets in, and it messes him up. This time, I've given him some advice on how to stay focused. I told Alonzo that he really needs to succeed in the culinary world if he really wants to help his little brothers and sisters get out of foster care. Today in the kitchen, I use something I learned from Chef. I try to chant out names of people with my family or my friends that I really care about. If I make it, they make it, you know? So this is my opportunity. I gotta work hard. I have to pick up this knowledge. It pushes you right in the back, right where you need it. I tried to make like a pastrami roll or just trying to do something different. I'm looking for creativity. This is all about experimenting. We got 30 minutes. Just like that? But put a couple of them. Adam. Could you show me how should I uh, slice the avocado for me? Yeah, you help with that too. <laughs> Kathy, Brett, Lonzo, and um, Shate, they was asking for help because I have experience in that, and like, that's like their first time. What do you call that? South Central Sushi. South Central Sushi? Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it was cool that like they were asking me what to do, and I'm looking out for them, you know, seeing that they're doing it right. And I felt like, you know, responsible, and that's what I like to feel. We were actually being a team instead of like acting like we're not a team. I end up getting help from like everybody. Like everyone put their own input and you know, just showing each other how to roll or showing each other like what goes well. We got about 15 minutes. I was thinking about doing something both sweet and salty. So there was bacon and pineapple and then just added chicken to it. I see the artists over here, Kit Kat. Woo! Look at bread. Damn, bread. All right, let's get these plates lined up. The whole table needs to be organized. Everybody stand in front of their dish. I'm extremely blown away. All you guys have done a, a fabulous job. So, Alonzo, what did you create for us? It's kind of like a pastrami roll, but um, <laughs> the pastrami, I got some pickles, a little uh -oh. mustard in there. Mm, Everybody taste. Good. Come on. I like it. It's good. You like the mustard? Real ghetto, huh? <laughs> there it is. And it has that palate. I was very happy to know that Alonzo had found a way to overcome his fears and is now focusing right. on his cooking. Where we at? Big Brett. What's up, Chef? Talk to us. I used uh, raw salmon, marinated it in uh, soy sauce and chili paste. OK. I called it Vegas Salmon Sushi. All right. A little salty, huh? You got to be real careful with soy sauce. It's like pouring straight salt. All right, great. Adam, <laughs> take us on your journey. All right, here we have. The salmon, salmon roll. It has salmon, ginger, carrot, and avocado. On the rice, I mix the sweet rice, like oil, and I put it on there so the rice can have a little bit more flavor. I have shrimp dipped in egg, put a little bit of salt and pepper on it. Looks and good. Yeah, pops. It's That's pops. Good. Yeah. Maria. It's Agnes Sushi. Agnes. My street. <laughs> um, cooked chicken with carrots and saute jalapenos. Taste the spice? No kick in it? Yeah. Lean <laughs> cat. Come on now. It's just, it's chicken, bacon, and pineapple. Then we put a, a little sweet chili sauce on this one. And try to fall. I can't even taste it. I, I know, I don't even I taste it. I don't taste nothing right now, but that's sauce. See, you can have a beautiful looking dish, but don't taste good. Shante. My sushi is called the Bragg Sushi. Bragg because I got bacon, rice, avocado, and uh, ginger. That's real creative. I like that. Yeah. That grab makes it pop. Pop. Now, no, this is good. So you got a, the balance of flavor. Everyone helped each other out and worked as a team during the challenge. So I decided that we would vote on the next kitchen hierarchy. Everyone gets one vote. Nobody's going to vote for their own. How many for Adam? One, two, three, four. <laughs> Five. Okay, so everybody voted. So, Adam, I'm gonna name a crew leader. Thank you. For tomorrow's event. So I'm giving you not a second, not a third, a fourth chance, because I believe in you. 
I'm gonna prove them that I could be a cool leader. I'm like, I bet they've been thinking that, like, why isn't Adam cool leader from day one, you know? When I think about Adam and the crap he gave me, he's acting like it's just a walk in the park, so we're gonna walk, but we're gonna be in the sand, you know, like a little bit tougher to walk. You're gonna be the leader of Team One, and I'm gonna name Shantae crew leader for Team Two. Shantae and Adam are the only two crew members to have missed a day's work, but they have a lot of personal problems they've been dealing with. By giving them both responsibilities as a crew leader, I'm hoping they can rise to the occasion and overcome some of their personal problems. I didn't really think that was fair that Shantae is crew leader. There was never two crew leaders, and now there's two crew leaders. I'm like, why she got to be crew leader while I'm doing it? Well, I don't want to be like, OK, I'm a leader, and Adam's a leader, too. You know, I don't want to be just a leader by myself. I want you guys to be strong. I want you to be focused uh, going into tomorrow's event. You really got to step up to the plate, OK, and earn the respect of your co-workers and your crew. Next up on the Chef Jeff Project. Do you have something you need to say? Stupid. What's stupid? Tonight, we're cooking for the cast of Ka, the Cirque du Soleil show at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. Our job is to cater for them in between their two nightly performances. All right, so this is the Ka menu. What I'm going to do is I'm going to split the menu in half. There's a lot of work to do, so I made both Adam and Shantae crew leaders. I got Adam, Kat, and Alonzo, team one. Team two is going to be Shantae, Brett, and Maria, I'm gonna tell you what everybody there loves. They like raw food. It was crazy. We're doing all raw, and all this raw food stuff, it really makes my stomach hurt, because I was taught to cook food, you know, not just throw it in your mouth. We're gonna have the sushi. It's gonna be the spicy tuna. We have beef tartare, Kobe beef. Good quality. Knock somebody out with this, <laughs> all right? Then we're gonna go with the miniature pancakes. They're really called Bellinis. We're gonna serve with some cream fresh and some caviar. I'm not willing to taste caviar because, I don't know, it looks gross. <laughs> then we're gonna have Pacific oysters. So we're gonna do that as a team, shucking oysters. Go over your menu, I'll be right here in the kitchen. Uh, Adam, what do you want me to do with these? Just put them in the rack. First time crew leader, you know, I didn't do good. But this time, man, like, I don't know, I just want to do good. Let them get it. Give them some direction. Tell them what you need. You got everything you need? Yes, sir. I don't see chopsticks. Can I get some chopsticks? I think Adam's a little nervous about being crew leader. He's not really taking the lead right now. Just kind of following Chef around. Turn it all the way off, get you two towels, Chef. I'm kind of bummed that I didn't get the chance to, to be a leader by myself. What else we got? Uh, we got the uh, creme fraiche oh. is ready. We need to find some more caviar. I would like the experience of leading the whole crew instead of me leading with Adam, but I do have good leadership skills. Shantae, what's your garnish for those? Uh, what? The chive sticks, remember? Oh, chive sticks. Maria? Yeah. What? You heard, Chef? Get the chives and cut them on a bias. They're good. These ones don't look right to me. The only ones I would use is probably that one. It's ridiculous. You didn't say make no more pancakes. You said you was gonna make it fall. It's Shantae's. She's being bossy. Excuse me. Thank you, babe. I hope now that she got the position of a crew leader, she realizes what a crew leader has to do so she can stop saying, you know, we're bossy or whatever. This one's almost too dark. Shantae, the oysters are in. Y'all ready to shuck some oysters? <laughs> I never did that before. I got the Michael Jackson glove. <laughs> All right. Come on, Chef. Come on. Oh. <laughs> Let's do it. All right, we're gonna chuck oysters with these. If you don't do this right, and you're not paying attention, this blade here will creep up and dig you right into your hand. Oh, God. Right here, all right? See the key? 
is you gotta find a little opening here where the two shells come together and you get that knife in there and pop this open. That got a lot of meat. Oh yeah, that one meat. To me, it's, it's really hard. It's kind of scary because you don't want to stab your hand with the oyster sugar. We got to do probably 200. I want everybody to get a station right. and grab some oysters. Ah, yeah. You want to be careful. You don't want to tear it apart. OK. I just stab myself. That would really suck. It just looked like a big cow tongue or something in these oysters. But um, I really hope that I hurry up and get used to this kind of stuff. That's enough for now. We're going to shuck the rest of them when we get there. Mm. Don't do that, Adam. It's annoying. Do you realize you sound like a five-year-old child? Yeah. Adam has a history of beefing with most of the crew members. I've been teaching him how to walk away from conflict. As a crew leader, I know Adam will be tested. I hope he makes the right decisions. So Adam had to make baguettes. Which one am I to do? So he was cutting them, and they're all thick, and they're supposed to be really, really thin. Adam, make sure they're really, really, really thin. They're thin. You want me to show you how to do it? Because that's way too thick. Way too thick? Way too thick. I'm teaching the crew how to be team players, you know, to rely on each other. I asked Kathy to give Adam some feedback on what he was doing, and he started tripping. You just take your time. They're thin. They're thin. You don't think so? You think so? Well, I think so. I think this is way thin. That's how it's supposed to be. She snapped on me for some stupid shit about me cutting the bread too thick. If I can eat a little bit more drizzle. Just do it high. OK, that's too much stuff. What are you guys telling me to do? Stop. Just do it. I'm sorry, I can't be too sweet all the time, seriously. Do you have something you need to say? Stupid. What? 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 What's stupid? Oh, my God. Just wondering. He said stupid, and I know there was something else after that. <laughs> but, yeah, I was, I was very quick to confront him, because uh, there's no way I'm going to let him say stuff, like, especially right in front of my face, making sure we don't have any problems. And I was like, what the hell is wrong? I was like, this is stupid. And she's all tripping out on me. I'm going to go cry. I'm going to go cry now. Sorry. I let it go, man. My shoulders, man. It's nothing. I don't know, man. I just, like, in my head, like, letting it go. Like, man, there's no point in arguing anymore. Like, I'm happy that I'm, like, you know, changing. Excuse I me. got to. Thank you. I'm understanding how to just do all my temper in a little bit more. I'm very proud of how Adam handled the argument with Kathy. Two weeks ago, I probably would have to take him in to walk in and give him a talking to. Now I feel like, you know, we're really becoming like family. <laughs> Let's get everything organized. Hey, Adam. Let's get pumped up! Let's smile. I want to see everybody smiling right now. Yeah, we're going to have some fun tonight, man. We're going to car. Door is open. Let's get busy. Go, Maria. Oh, what's up? Andale pronto. Next up on the Chef Jam Project. Adam, Adam, <laughs> Adam. Tonight, we're cooking for the cast of Ka, the Cirque du Soleil show at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. Our job is to cater for them in between their two nightly performances. I just feel like we've come so far. I feel like I can't believe we're actually doing something for Ka, and we're going to be doing it for the cast. So it's going to be really cool to meet all these people. We got to have oysters popping right away. Get that sushi going. And I was tripping out, you know, about going to our new event, um, Ka, like, big time. It was kind of intense. We all just got in our little area, and we all just started working. So you guys know the first show ends in two hours. Jante, how we looking on oysters? Like oysters. 
I love oysters. These is hard. Yeah. I'm the leader, so I was disappointed. Like, why am I opening up the, the, the oysters, you know, shucking the oysters? Like, what leader does that? Tedious, huh? Mm-hmm. This is more work than doing a full course uh, big plate. We got about one hour. We got to push a little bit on those oysters. It was kind of hard because some oysters were really, really hard to check. So it was a struggle. I ended up cutting my hand, and I'm just trying to get the job done. Alonzo, good job on that sushi, man. I can see a big difference, you know? I see work being done. I hear less talking about what to do. This is what it's all about at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. This is what they remember us by, how we put it on the plate, the flavor. That's a wrap. That's you it? Did? Yeah. Shantae, Brett, and I, we were assigned to do the oysters with the mignonette sauce and the bellini with cream fraiche and caviar. I'm on a team with Alonzo and Adam. We're in charge of the beef tartare and spicy tuna sushi. The crew was doing so well. By the end of prep, I was able to take a step back. I wanted to take a back seat during service to see if the crew could run it on their own. You guys need to really pat yourself on the back. Look what you guys got on the table right now. You know, my confidence is building. I might be able to send y'all out on a small catering gig alone. Throughout this project, I do feel myself transforming. It's a motivational booster for me. You know, I just can't wait to come every single day and start working, and you know, it's just a great time. As soon as Kyle wrapped, they rushed our table, ready to throw down on some good food. <laughs> I think the performers love the food. It went quick. Even though it does take a lot to prepare and it just seems like it's gone in an instant, that's kind of like the best reward because if it's just hanging out there and nobody's eating it, then it's not good. Everybody, you know, from Kyle was eating oysters. I was tripping out, you know, about them eating those because I feel like just throwing up. Enjoy the food? It's really good. Yeah. I got kind of nervous for the car crew, you know, doing all these flips and climbing up walls, and it was crazy, you know. Um, I hope everybody digested their food well. <laughs> On behalf of all the cast and crew here at Ka, we want to thank Chef Jeff and his crew, the Posh Urban Catering, for catering all this delicious food for us. It's a bit of a treat to get to eat like this between shows. <laughs> I'm gonna tip my, uh, well, I don't have a hat on, but uh, my glasses to that guy who ate that extra large oyster <laughs> over there. Yeah, and it's funny because, you know, some of the, the crew here uh, never had raw oysters, so I think you guys have inspired uh, them to uh, want to eat it. And uh, Adam? No. No. <laughs> cheering me on to eat the oyster. So I was like pumped up, like, all right, I'm gonna do it for the team. Uh-oh, come on, Adam. Oh, everybody get away from him. Cause the first time he tried oysters, he threw up. And we're just like, ew. I didn't know that oyster was that big. And I was like, just trying to slide it down my mouth. And it was like, all slimy. And I felt it slimy down my throat. Yeah. Sorry about that, you guys. <laughs> Jeff, you and your crew were so gracious for putting so much thought, time, and effort okay. in a delicious, co-inspiring menu. So on behalf of the Casa Call, we would like uh, you guys to come back and watch the show tonight. Oh, really? Yes. Wow. This was awesome. So I'm really excited to go see the show tonight. We want to thank you guys. You know, we get to watch the show tonight. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be a pleasure. Yes, thank you. This Kai event was perfect. We got into the kitchen, we did what we had to do. It was awesome. Everyone was excited to see Ka. We had to clean up in a hurry to make the curtain. They took us on the elevator and they took us up to like a luxury box. 
it was nice, you know. I've seen luxury, but I've never lived luxury. Once we got in there, we were in like the VIP area. It was really, really cool. Those people are so talented. It was a wonderful show. Tomorrow I'm gonna show the crew how much they really mean to me. Some of the crew members really need to have some extended family members. I'm gonna take them to my home to meet my family so they can get a different understanding of what family life is really about. I want to pull them away from some of the negative influences that they're faced in in the daily life and see what it feels like to get support from family and friends. Next up on the Chef Ted Project. Hey. We're not going to cook today. I'm going to bring you guys to my home. You guys are going to get to meet my family. Okay. Yeah. Giving the crew the day off today, I have a big surprise for them. We're not gonna cook today. You guys gonna get to meet my family. Yeah. I'm gonna bring you guys to my home. I got a lot of family in town right now from all over the country. And we're celebrating my mother's 64th birthday party. Oh, wow. yes. It's kind of like a family reunion. And the reason why I wanna invite you guys is because you guys are like my family. We cook for your family? No. Oh. No. You don't have to. I want you guys to kick back and relax. You, you guys are my guests. I feel like he's providing us like we family, you know, so it's like, it's touching. He ain't looking at us because our background. People from the ghetto looking at us because of us. Yeah. Chef Jeff had told us previously that we were going to be going to his family reunion at his house. I'm actually pretty excited. So what's going on, y'all? Ready to go to the barbecue, y'all. barbecue. Yeah. Everybody's learning how to become a team. You know, I, I hear more conversation and we're more organized. We're a better team as a whole. I kind of feel bad because he's seen cousins that he hasn't seen in 30 years. Then he's going to be busting his ass in the kitchen. So what about cooking? What about helping him? I'm down for that. But he said he wants us to relax. He wants it to be a day of enjoying meeting his friends and family. But I'm not cooking. You know, Chef Jeff should just kick back and let us cater for him, you know? Like, Shantae's one's like, I don't want to do it, you know? Can't even do it for a couple hours, just, like, cook for him. Like, then how about this, guys? Let's go in our regular clothes, and if they need help, we'll just throw on our chef coats. Yeah, let's go see if they're ready. All right, let's go. <laughs> Smell that? I smell the barbecue already. Hey, what's up, crew? Come on in. Welcome to my house. It's my crib. Hi, Chef. Yeah. I'm gonna eat you guys in my family. Come on. Okay. Family, this is uh, my adopted family here. This is my real family all around you guys. And introduce yourselves. Everybody introduce yourselves. Oh. 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 Everybody was nice. Everybody was, you know, greeting us and giving us hugs and talking to us. Why'd you guys bring uh, chef clothes and stuff? Well, we figured you need some help. What? It's your party. I know your relatives. Y'all need to relax. <laughs> all right, I'm cool with that. It was like a change of plans. We all thought it would be a good idea to show his family what we learned from chef. I was touched when the crew showed up at my house and offered to cook. They really made me proud. Come on, give you guys a tour around the pool. Oh, but it's the Rock Mountain right here. This is uh, nice. this is a little grotto right here. You know, we always talk about that house on the hill with the white picket fence, you know? This is it for me. Um, that was very inspiring for me because, you know, I knew that he worked his butt off to get to where he was at, and I know that I have to do that, too. This is what it's all about. I mean, it ain't about the homies on the street. It ain't about that drama out there. It's about family and kicking it and having a good time. That's why I spend all my time when I'm not working right here. He's such an inspiration to me, because it's like, he really did come from nothing, and now he's, like, living a great life. Let's cook, huh? You guys go ahead over there and start getting rolling. So everything's in ice coolers over there, the shrimp, the meat, everything. We'll fire up the grill. All right, Shantae, you're going to be on shrimp, the grill ready to go. Have you guys ever grilled before? No. Uh -huh. <laughs> OK, who all have uh, worked the grill before? All three of you guys. Maria, I'm going to put you on the fajita station, you and Kathy. Adam. <laughs> I'm going to put you on New York steaks, OK? And I'm going to have uh, Brett and Lonzo on the chicken. Just have fun. Yeah. 
it's a lot of stuff, fajitas and burgers and all this stuff that he's preparing. I hate to see people doing all the work at their events, you know? All work and no play make a grumpy chef Jeff. That's good, baby, that's good. You guys are doing good. Y'all ready for some customers? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Work of art. Seeing how Chef Jeff, you know, mingle, how everybody respects him, and amazing. And it makes me want to work harder and figure it out because I got a lot of family members that I would love to help. It's just an inspiration. You guys enjoying the food? Yeah. Good. 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 Glad to hear that. Yeah. Overall, it was a nice experience. Nice people. Nothing like what I'm used to, you know, having a reunion, everybody's drunk and fighting. It was so cool to see Chef's other side. He just had a good time today, and it was nice to just sit back and, and watch him. I was so proud of the crew to see them there cooking for my family, you know? Everybody was at peace. There was no drama. It was a moment that I know I'll cherish for the rest of my life. What's up, crew? Well, I'm really happy you guys came and you guys got a chance to meet my family. When I see you guys, I see myself. Because you know, when I was coming up, or we lived for the weekend, our homies and the gadgets and the trinkets that we think mean success. But at the end of the day, this is what success is. You know, your family. My family means a lot to me. And that's why I wanted to bring you guys here. Come here, Jamar. I went to prison when my son was five years old. But he turned out good. And I'm proud of you, son. And I know we haven't spent a whole lot of time together, but I'm proud of you. Here, come here, Mom. It hasn't been easy for her. She never gave up on me, never. Jeff was doing a little crying because he was proud, and he told us it wasn't like, you know, tears of sadness, it was tears of happiness. My wife never gave up on me either. And when I came home from prison, I was crazy. And she hung in there with me. There's nothing in the world that I would give my family up for. You know, I wanted my mother to be proud of me. And I am, you know, anyway. very proud of you. These young people from L.A., they prepared the food. They made this happen today, and um, I wanted them to share this birthday with you, Mom. Thank you. I appreciate it very much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I've always said that if I make it in life, that I would reach back and bring people with me. Uh, this moment at my mother's 64th birthday party was huge for all of us. My mother was able to see firsthand the work of her son, the son who they always said that wouldn't live past 18. It was so moving, it was very emotional for all of us. Next up on the Chef Jeff Project. I can't talk right now. Too. None of us expected this barbecue to become so emotional. You know, some of the crew members don't have the best relationships with their family. I wanted me and my family to give them the love and support that some of them really, really needed. You guys all met Shantae, huh? Uh, Shantae has four children that she raises. She's 23 years old, and it hasn't been easy for her. I just want to say that I'm honored to be around all your, fa your family members. No arguing, no fighting. Everybody just got along. I'm not used to that. Maria is the youngest one. She's 18 years old, and this girl here is so talented. She has a bright future ahead of her. You got me at the right time. You know, I got kicked out of my house, and I wish I could um, one day get back with my family and talk to my dad again and just spend a good time. The way Chef talked about me to everybody that said they were so talented, and it, it, it got to me. Brett, my man right there, he got the dice on his neck. He's a good kid, and everyone had to make a special dish. 
and Brett made a big plate of mashed potato. That's all he said he knew how to make, you know? He's come a long way. You know, I just want to thank you for everything that you've uh, done for me. Sometimes I might not express it enough because I don't, like, cry or anything like that. But, I mean, <laughs> like, I don't know. But it just, it's really touched my heart a lot. And I thank you. It really means a lot to me, you know, all the things that Chef Jeff, you know, have, what he's done for us in this whole entire project. Now, Alonzo, he has a huge heart. He's a very loving, caring person. He has eight brothers and sisters, and he hopes to get his brothers and sisters out of foster care and take care of them one day. I just want to say thank you, Chef, for the opportunity, and I had fun serving everybody. I see some people with the happy mouth, you know. Was... <laughs> God bless everybody. Cat. <laughs> This girl here is amazing as well, and she wants to go to school, and you've been a great crew leader, Kat. Here you go again, but... Sorry? You mean so much to me. Thank you. <laughs> Being out here in California, like, away from my family, and just trying to get my life straightened out, it's just been so hard being alone since meeting you, you've just given me a totally different outlook on life, and I feel like I do a part of a family here. I love you guys so much. <laughs> Thank you. What about you, Adam? I can't talk right now, too. You changed my life, man. <laughs> I don't know what to say, man. All right, so, dude, you got all the potential, and you're gonna be all right. Just want right. you to know, man, you changed me into a strong person. Yeah. Appreciate that, man. Thank you. I didn't cry for no reason. I cried because, like, I couldn't hold it. Like, I have so much love for him, you know? It took a lot of, you know, for me to cry in front of his whole family, and I'm a dude, you know, with tattoos hanging out. We found out a little bit more about how Chef feels about it. It was nice. <laughs> Ah. It's my baby right here. When Chef hugged his daughter, I couldn't help it. it. Just tears were falling off my eyes. It makes me just want to get in touch with my dad. I moved out my house a couple of months ago because my relationship yeah. with my stepmother, it's not good. He doesn't know what I'm going through or anything, and it sucks because I just want to I want to get that feeling of going home and seeing him, you know, and hugging him and knowing that he was there for me. And that's just like what I want to get back. This Chef Jeff project is not just about food, like I told you, it's about second chances. Everybody made wrong choices, right, in life.